Here's a super quick video on how to animate a wheel spin for still imagery. First thing we need to do is grab all of the geometry that is inside the wheel. So I'm going to just shift and drag a box from the left to the right. We'll pick everything that's fully within that box. Now, before I go any farther, I want to point out that if you have symmetry on your geometry, when I group this, you'll notice that I lose all that information on that symmetrical object. So we need to do something else first. So let's start over. So the first thing I do is I click on this in the scene tree, right click, and go to Edit, Unshare. And with alias geometry that has symmetry, it, it is the same as hitting symmetry, create geometry inside of alias. And now, if I zoom back in on that wheel again. It's a little bit larger to get the tire. Now when I group this, you'll see that I did not lose my geometry on the other side. So now here is my wheel. At this point I could rename this. And I'm going to just go ahead and hit Isolate, so that way we can focus. Next thing I do is need to do is set up my pivot point. So I'll go to my Transform Editor. And if I go to Shift-W, you'll see that my pivot point is not centered on my object. So, Rotation, Pivot, say Move to Object Center. And it will move it to the center of my wheel. Uh, and if I want the caliper to not rotate, because obviously if I start to rotate this and the Y, you're going to see that my caliper is rotating. So I could grab these pieces of geometry. my caliper so I could group that and then just just gra drag it back up out of the wheel. Now it went invisible because I'm isolated just the wheel. So now that I have my wheel I need to animate it. So go to my curve editor and the wheel is selected. So whatever is selected here shows up in my curve editor. So I can click on the wheel, turn to open up my timeline, and I don't really need to go too far. So what I want to do is I want to just animate the rotation of the Y. So rotation Y, I can say key selected. Um, maybe I can make this go out to the 30th frame, go out to one second, and let's increase that to 360 and say key selected and now you see that instantly on my curve editor you'll see that the graph is showing that something has happened so if I rotate this now if I increase uh, my animate my timeline you'll see that it stops now that's I want it to always spin and keep spinning forever so one of the things you can do here is right click on the rotation say Post infinity mode, let's go to linear, and so it'll just keep going linearly out. So it just keeps spinning for infinity. So you really have to do animate that first wheel, uh, the first rotation. But why this is great is because now I can just adjust this one point to really adjust how fast something is spinning. So now if I turn on my camera editor, and I turn on 
motion blur and I adjust my lens shutter speed if I turn on any aliasing you see that my wheel is spinning now I can either there's two ways to make it spin more slow down the shutter speed so 1 15th but if I maybe I'm animating a lot of different things and slowing the shutter speed really far down makes a lot of the other animations not look good so now this is where I can adjust this value so instead of being 360 on the 30th frame I could say well let's make that at the 10th frame so now it's doing one full revolution in 10 frames or I could you know make this smaller So lots of ways to control this. Now once I've done that, I can say create block, and now it's a block. And the nice thing about a block is I can turn it off so that I don't have to have the animation going unless I want to. Now the other benefit of the block is let's, I'll show you. If I go to isolate, drag a box, hit isolate again, and let's get rid of that caliper here. I'm just going to hide everything, control H. Now, grab this complete set, go to my scene graph and group it, hit this button to group, and I can call this And all I need to do here is go to my transform editor again and just set the pivot. So move to object center. So now I've got my pivot point on the center. Close that. Click my camera editor. Now this is the left front wheel. I can take this block and copy it. Copy the block. Now click on the LR wheel and go paste and now I've pasted that animation onto my rear wheel so if I turn off isolate go back to the side view And then I can adjust that with my shutter speed. And there's how I spin the wheels. Now the next step is to animate the background. So first we need to import a background to use. Let's open up our asset manager. Go to environments, go to the examples, grab the airfield, say add to scene. So now we're going to have the background moving. So the car will stay still, the wheels will spin, and the background will animate. To do this, we need to open up material editor and select our background. Now all these settings for the environment are grayed out because it's an asset. So what we need to do is go to that asset and I'm not going to hit the modify button. I'm actually going to right click and say asset remove reference. So now I, it's no longer asset. I can move it and adjust it. So what we want to do is animate the background moving past the vehicle. The best way to do that is to adjust the center, the center of the environment. So if I move in the Y, you'll see that it moves side to side. So I want to move it in the X. Obviously it's going to take a huge number to really get any movement out of this. So again, go to the curve editor. In the curve editor I can adjust you know, materials as well. So I've got airfield selected, so it's showing up here. And it was center X. Center X, I can right click and say key selected. 
I can jump out to the 50, give it a, a value, 1,000. Give it a value. Let's say just put key thousand. selected. Say key selected. So now I have our animation. So as I scrub through that, you'll see the background moves slowly. Now again, I'm going to use the same trick before. Post infinity blur. Let's do linear. And let's also do pre-infinity blur linear. That way it does the f everything before the first frame. So if I now move up on my vehicle here, go to my cameras, make sure that motion blur is on, turn on anti-aliasing to see the results. Now the background isn't moving enough, so this is where we need to adjust it. So go back to your curve editor, hit the this button to grab everything, and now I can grab that single frame, and I could move this to, let's just say, what if we did it 1,000 and a single frame. Now it's now it's up to you to dial in like how the, how much you want it to blur, and that can be adjusted by either making by moving the frame or actually moving the value. Either one, whatever's easiest. I also would recommend just adding a little depth of field to help tie everything together. I'm going to go ahead and grab my materials for this vehicle, which I already have preset materials since I use the same ones. and let it finish. Actually, for faster results, let's turn off the full global illumination, just do pre-computed plus image-based lighting, and that will finish even faster.